First off, I want to say, if you haven't yet seen my comprehensive RX 480 review, you can do so via the card right here. My initial impressions of the card were very positive. Any game in 1080p could for the most part be maxed out while still maintaining appropriate frame rates, and 1440p was a breeze as well if you were willing to compromise on enhancements such as anti-aliasing. And for a whopping, well, not whopping at all actually, 200 US dollars for the 4GB model and $240 for the 8GB variant, the RX 480 is no doubt one of the cheapest enthusiast grade cards available. But but not all was shiny on June 29th, 2016. So many who were looking forward to the card ended up drifting into unknown territory, making claims about the ARX 40 that never held up in court. Some purported that the 480 was on par with the GTX 980, and yet others still asserted that the 40 would actually compete with the GTX 1070. These claims coming from people who had never owned the card. And that's the point I want to address here. I feel like AMD's been mistreated a bit. So many of you overhyped this card, and that's not necessarily your fault. When I was under my non-disclosure agreement with AMD, I, I couldn't, I suppose, correct those of you who were making those radical claims. I wanted to so badly, but my hands were tied. And I feel like this swelled up into a giant bubble that became the expectation of the RX 480. And of course, when I and other reviewers released our benchmarks of the card, those expectations were inevitably not met. So I invite those of you who were very adamant on rejecting AMD for yet another cycle due to this quote-unquote quote, issue to reconsider. Nothing AMD said about their own card was misleading. Even the floating point performance of the card was on par with what we saw on the benchmark, so I'm not even sure what was so surprising here. Another controversy involves the PCI power draw issue. In a nutshell, the card is pulling more power from the motherboard's PCIe slot than it is from the 6-pin power connector. Now, this isn't something that perpetually happens, only during very minute peak demands for power does the card actually behave in this fashion. The problem, however, is that the card can actually destabilize the motherboard being used and cause it to shut off as a result of sucking too much power from that lane. And I can actually attest to this firsthand, believe it or not. I was in the middle of building my $350 AMD PC build, featuring this card right here, actually, and in the middle of every benchmark, just about, I think I think every game did this, uh, the computer turned off uh, randomly, no blue screen of death, no warning, just shut off. Now this is typically indicative of one of two things, either the computer is not receiving enough power from the power supply or the computer is running too hot and shutting down immediately as a failsafe mechanism. While I was monitoring temps throughout, the CPU never reached 50 degrees Celsius, even during Prime 95 tests, and the graphics card remained within its safe zone as well, around 80 C. This led me to initially believe that my power supply wasn't cutting it. The one that I was using, that I undeniably obtained on the cheap, is a 400 watt power supply, that's, that's it. However, this should have been enough. Uh, it should have been enough for the computer. I, you know, kind of did all the math in my head, and it should have had about 50 to 75 watts to spare. Still pushing it in terms of how cheap the power supply was, but it should have been enough. But okay, I decided to give the power supply the benefit of the doubt. I swapped it for the 750 watt Supernova from EVGA. Obviously, no problems with this one, right? But still, at the same point, roughly in every benchmark, the computer would continually turn off. Yeah, and I'll admit, I was a bit confused at first. It never happened when I stressed the CPU, but when I played games like Rise of the Tomb Raider, Hitman, Dying Light, GTA V, all of these resulted in system failure. So while my 750 watt was still in the system, I swapped the RX 480 with my GTX 980 Ti, a card that consumes significantly more power, about 350 watts under full load, and everything ran great, actually. I was even receiving great scores on my benchmarks. Stay tuned for that video, by the way. But now I was left in a bit of a deadlock. I had already tested the RX 40 for quite some time in my personal rig, so there's no way this card is to blame. And sure enough, throwing the card back into my personal rig resulted in absolutely no problems whatsoever. Which brings us to the motherboard. I was using an A78AX series AM2 motherboard for my Athlon X4 635, the CPU in the AMD budget build. I didn't suspect the CPU because CPU issues don't typically result in total system blackouts just randomly, rather those are usually accompanied by blue screens of death. So the conclusion I came to then was that my motherboard was experiencing problems with power allocation. It was being overloaded more than likely by the graphics card, the RX 480, since the 980 Ti didn't result in the shutdown, and that was the only variable that changed in that scenario. And sure enough, after a quick search online, boom, the RX 480 power draw issues via the PCI lane. Made sense, and unfortunately, it looks as though the motherboard I was using was just too, I don't know, I guess old is the word, I suppose. My Z170 motherboard from ASUS had zero problems with the RX 480, but it honestly shouldn't. It's new, it wasn't cheap, and its power phase delivery system is top notch. So this is what it boils down to. If you plan on purchasing a reference RX 480, or any RX 480 for that matter, that features only a single 6-pin supplementary power connector, don't pair it with a super cheap or super old motherboard. The card will end up drawing more power from the PCI slot than 
then from the 6 pin, which can only deliver a maximum of 75 watts by the way, and will likely result in spontaneous system crashes during especially intense graphical scenes, especially if your motherboard is not designed to send more than typically about 75 watts through the PCI lane. What I suggest doing for my fellow viewers who aren't using bright and shiny new PC equipment and yet are still interested in the RX 480 is wait for third party manufacturers to roll out their versions of the card. In your case, I recommend only purchasing a 480 with something greater than a 6 pin, so something like an 8 pin or a 2 8 pin RX 480. These supplementary power connectors should in theory remove this power bottleneck from older motherboards giving you that smooth gameplay you always wanted, but without the possibility of a system crash due to power instability. So to wrap things up, just remember that the RX 480 was never meant to compete with Nvidia's GTX 1070 or even its older Maxwell-based 980. Its price tag and specifications say so. What the card intended to do was undercut a previous generation 970s and 390s with a great price point, here in the States at least, and rivaling performance. Expect future maturation of Crimson drivers to boost those frame rates as well. Only by a little bit, but hey, that's how much the RX 480 lost to the GTX 970 in a few of my benchmarks, so it's anybody's game at this point. If you like this video and the content that was brought up be sure to give this thing a thumbs up give it a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite or if you hate everything about life click subscribe button if you haven't already stay tuned for our 350 dollars amd budget build featuring the rx 480 if you want a pc on the cheap but you don't want a cheap graphics card stay tuned for this thing if it wasn't already in the card that was previously brought up in this video this is science studio thanks for learning with us Oh, and one more thing, don't blame AMD or Nvidia for the extreme outrageous prices that you're seeing in Europe and Asia. Most of what you see in terms of price hikes with respect to what we pay here in the States has to do with import taxes, tariffs, shipping costs, currency conversions, etc. So no, neither Nvidia nor AMD hate you, it's just business, and unfortunately, politics plays a huge role here. Till next time.